down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Okay, another Savvy Radio Show with, man, the guy that I'm going to do a lot of shows with. I'm so excited. 12 years experience in the real estate uh, on the radio, but over 50 something years in experience. We're about to find out more about Pal Pointing. Uh, he has been a mentor to one of my mentors. He has, man, has uh, he has a library of thousands and thousands of hours of the radio of questions and answers uh, from a mobile home park to a storage facility. Uh, it's been in his veins. This guy breathes oxygen. And uh, please let me introduce Pat Point. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. Glad to be here. Let's man, do it. We're, we're t- today, we're talking about money. We're talking about private money. We're talking about self-directed IRAs. This is, I believe, a hot topic, not only for myself, because these are things that I have not done yet, and I haven't raised private money. I haven't need to. I've been fortunate, but I'm, I'm, my bank shut me down the other day. They said, no more. Uh, you're over your limit. I was like, oh, okay. And um, self-directed IRA I, it was minimal. Well, then I just I just fell in love with Pat for the years. Just, uh, you know, I live vicariously through other people that I have been on his bus tour that have been involved with him throughout the years. And we've connected. He came on a bus tour. And long story short, he has so much wisdom. Um, we can we can have the longest podcast to date, but we're, we're going to keep it kind of down and dirty. So, Pat, tell me about real estate. Just give people a few minutes about who you are, where you came from. I know you have a whole history and family of real estate, so... We want to know more about you. Well, I grew up in the real estate business. I learned most everything that I do from my father. I followed him around most of the time. I didn't even know I was learning, you know. But uh, my father was a real estate developer. He subdivided property. He built houses. He built warehouse buildings. He raised private mortgage money. That's where I really came up with the idea. Cool. He uh, used to borrow money from uh, from individuals. He didn't know what an IRA. There wasn't an IRA in existence, but he found wealthy individuals who would make him a loan very much like what I do today. Okay. And he would use that money to buy a piece of property, cut it up into acreages, sell it, finance it himself. And when the payments came in, he would make a payment on to the investor and keep the difference. Okay. And he did over a thousand of those transactions in his and, early years. And that's where I started. And you had a mortgage company as well. What, what all the I entities owned a mortgage that you had company in Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. Uh, it was a net branch of a of Source One Mortgage Company, which is one of the larger lenders that's now sold out to another lender. But anyway, I was the first net branch on the East Coast in the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area in Fairfax, Virginia. They did, uh, oh, we did maybe somewhere in the area around $100 million a year in, in originations okay. in my mortgage company. And now you're in storage units, right? You, you have I own a storage unit, uh, a small, not a large one, a fairly small one. Okay. Um, 120 units. Okay. Uh, room there to expand to about 400 units at some point in time, which I bought from a bank in distressed situation. REO. And I also financed it with private investor. Okay. And you've been in commercial property. You have some office space at one time. Yeah, I own some offices. I, I don't own any at the moment. I'd like to buy some more. It's, you know, I buy and sell is what I yeah. do in, in my life. Single family? You, you, I you own have some units now? I own about 35, I guess, at the moment. And that changes from time to time. I got three coming up to sell. What, one uh, one claim to fame, another claim to fame that I've heard. So let me give you a quick story. So um, there's a guy that kind of mentored me. His name is Stephen Earp. And uh, he was getting mentored under Pat Pointon and went to bus tour. It was an awesome story that he's like, if someone doesn't buy this house on this weekend, I'm going to buy it. Well, my buddy bought it for and, and flipped it and made 20000 So he all the time I hear all these great stories about Pat and what, you know, what he's done. I'm like, who is this guy? Well, one day I was dealing with some tenant drama and uh <laughs> massive tenant drama and i'm like so i called my mentor steven at that time his name's steven Earp, and i was like dude hey how do i handle this he's like i don't have tenants <laughs> i learned that from pat where i sell them the house i i take contract for deed or lease purchase or rent to own whatever you want to call because that and that has been my ultimate goal as a real estate investor is not to manage property. I haven't. I have only have about three units that I have sold on contract for deed, 
But I think that's a claim to fame that I have gotten from you, that you don't have any maintenance issues. No, I have a lot of rental property. I'm about 35 rentals. I probably have, oh, another 10 or 12 or 15 under contract for deed at the moment. That you don't even, you just collect checks. I forget I even have them until something comes up. You and know? then uh, what's the percentage you'd say that they would be in default? Like you, loan- Oh, well, they'll, def- they'll default. Uh, probably 35% of them will default. I'd like to say none, but sure. I'm, that's not the way it works. However, most of the time when they default, I make money. Well, we get it back and start all over. And right? usually, because they were homeowners, they weren't too hard on it. And once in a great while, I have to foreclose one, but I have an agreement with a, a foreclosure attorney to do a flat rate foreclosure, whether it's a $10,000 deal or a $1 million deal for $1,400. Great. And so I just foreclose them when I have to and go down the road. I don't want to. Every, I wish everybody I sold a house to paid for it and lived a happy life there forever and ever. But unfortunately, about a third of them don't. Sure. And, and that's one reason is I'm taking people that might or might not be able to qualify for a conventional loan. Right. And they still get to live their dream of owning home ownership. And they get tax deductions and other things that help them. All right. If we get more time into that, we'll get into that. That's a whole other story. Yeah, it's a whole other. Believe me, Pat will be back on the show just uh, just to talk about um, subject twos and we might even cover that a little bit today uh, and that's going to be a hard one to t- that's a that's a tough one subject twos are a great way to buy property for a guy that's just starting out we could have a a series of a dozen podcasts on how to do stuff and, 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 and we will and we will but and we're going to come on location going to happen today okay please. so let's let's get into private money let's okay. if you can remember um is it okay if i ask your age i'm 68 okay yeah and still young 68 and would you can you remember what like your first private um, lending that you've asked for money, like you. Yes, I I probably can. Okay, tell me, tell us about well, it. the very first one I ever did, uh, and I did it this way because I'd heard you could, but I hadn't done it. Okay. Okay. I uh, used an option to buy a thirty acre track of land in Choctaw, Oklahoma, okay. on Northeast Tenth Street in Henny Road. Okay. And I uh, gave the guy five hundred dollars for the option with, and I got a six month option from him. I think he was a friend of my dad, and I think he kind of let me have it for a small okay number. let's clarify uh, option so he's got a piece of I've paper got option to buy the property that means he guarantees to purchase the property for a specific amount with for a specific this, time w- when you thirty thousand dollars and what the was the time frame when six you, months six months so you had six months right to pay it to, off to pay it off to okay get then i went then i went to a surveyor and uh, that i knew and i said give me a price to make this into one acre tracks so he, he gave me a price, and I said, well, I'll pay you double that, but I can't pay you anything if it doesn't get approved by the city of Choctaw. If it does, I'll pay you when I close the loan with the bank. My banker said, I'll finance 100% of this deal, but you've got to have a fileable plat before I'll loan you one cent. So they so, get turned down? No, it, it got approved. I got okay. it approved. Okay. So then the surveyor did the survey, and I went and paved the road. My, own, my dad owned the equipment. I used him to pave the road. And I went out to builders, and while I was paving the road, I sold all the lots. And at the time, I got about eight thousand dollars a piece for them. Some of them nine, so probably an average of eighty five hundred. And there were sixteen, eighteen of them, twenty of them, maybe almost about twenty of them, I guess. So I got a hundred and sixty sixty thousand dollars. Had about thirty thousand in the deal, plus twenty five hundred in the survey, and plus another ten in, in street. So I probably had. Forty-five, they call it fifty thousand dollars in it. So, in about a ninety-five day period of time, I made a hundred thousand bucks, and I did not have about five hundred dollars of my money in it and on the option. The truth was, I borrowed the five hundred dollars from a friend of mine to see if I could do it without one single red cent. Okay, of my money. when when did you do this? How old were you? Oh, I was probably thirty-six or thirty-seven when I did that deal transaction. Okay, I still drive through that subdivision. Nice subdivision. And then. Um, you were doing so well. So how do you, how did you how do you raise private money now? Do you just is there well a today? I don't have to do much. I have a series of investors today who probably take care of my needs without me going out and spending any time getting new. But when I started, the first thing you do is you look for people who have money that's not working. And by working, I mean they have money in CDs, they have money in savings accounts, they have money in IRAs that um, they've worked over the years to build up. They have money in uh, some type of early retirement 401k where like when the general motors plant closed there were a lot of people that took early retirement and got a settlement and put it in i that went into an ira and those things are earning virtually no money i mean right now i think your iras are less than one percent 
Well, what happens is those are held by a custodian or a bank or some other custodian, such as Fidelity Investments or somebody. And, and we're talking they, about IRA? Yeah. Okay. Now, somebody holds that money. Hold, it be holds your retirement. Or, or whoever. Okay. Holds oh. that money in the okay. custodian. Well, they then turn around and loan it out. So you go to any bank in town, they have IRA money that's on deposit with them. You borrow it to buy a new car, buy a house or whatever, you pay them 3 to 7% interest, depending on what it is. But they are paying 1% or less on the IRA to the IRA investor, and so they're keeping the difference. That's how banks make money. Sure. Well, I said, okay, I'll find somebody that's got the money, and I'll pay them what I'd pay the bank. It'll be a killer deal for them and a killer deal for me. Okay. Now you got to convince people to to trust me. Hand over fifty thousand. Well, the way I did that was I knew some people. From time to time, I was able to do it. The first place I perfected it was getting sellers to carry back a mortgage on the property they were selling me, and they finance? already owned that property, so that was financeable. Because if they had had a property, let's say that, but back when I started, a lot of them had FHA loans or were free and clear. And, I, and they would take back a second above that FHA loan for 90% of the purchase price. And I could get in a $60,000 house for five or $6,000, make them a monthly payment big enough to pay their mortgage and the second mortgage. So it's like a contract for deed for you. Yeah, very much. And then I thought, well, you know, there's people out there that have money that don't know what to do with it. And so I'm, I'm was looking for I knew about the mortgage business. I'd bought and sold mortgages. I knew how that part of the business worked. So I went to a company called Equity Trust and I wasn't the only one. I was just one of the early ones. I'm not sure how many, but I was one of the okay. very early ones. Uh, Equity Trust was known years ago by another name and uh, um they were an IRA custodian and we said, "Well, why can't you store these people's money like the government says you have to? Fill out the government paperwork and let us pay you a fee." Sure. And they said, well, we could. That'd be fine. And I said, then we could borrow that money back and use it for whatever and pay the IRA through you, the custodian, uh, the monthly payments. Why wouldn't that work? And they said, well, it would work. And they wanted the deposits. So we worked out a system where you could transfer your money from where you had it to them as a custodian with no taxable event whatsoever. And then I could turn around and borrow that money from them on a first mortgage on a piece of real estate here in Oklahoma. And I never exceeded about 65% of value, sometimes 70%, but right in that area, which left the investor with who owned the IRA a very nice, safe first mortgage on a piece of property. Far safer than stocks or bonds or whatever, which is what Fidelity would do with your money. The bank would loan it out on cars or whatever here. Sure. Uh, but real estate's a safer bet than either one of those. Anyway, that's what I would do with the money, and it allowed me to pay you, the investor, through your IRA, a much higher rate of return because let's say I was paying you 10%. It was 10% tax deferred as opposed to 1% to 5% that the IRA custodian was paying you, be it a bank or be it Fidelity or somebody. And so I could pay much higher rate. Now I pay 6% is all I pay, and the reason is I have more people wanting to loan me money than I need, so I don't pay higher rate. But I started off paying higher rate interest rates were higher all right we know that we have a class coming up in june at the end of the month next month a month from now june 25th you're going to teach people how to raise private money and use private money so what give us some tips like i've heard the thing called a credibility kit do you have that now i know it's easy for you so you got to think like what's because well, you have the, all yes, this history yes, like yes I, I, I did that and i used yeah, to hold the, some seminars or or evenings at uh at a hotel like the Hilton or someplace. Okay. And I would put a table out with pictures, eight by 10 photographs of all of the properties that I owned. That you currently owned at the time? At the time. And I would list a little blurb below them about. About the property. What it was. What the return how it was is. Rented, how it was financed. Generally, I didn't put the investor's name. On and this that is, little these blurb. are your other private monies. Yes. Okay. Because some of them would have objected to the world. Sure. I, I, what they if owned. I loaned you money, I don't want everybody to know that. Right. Exactly. Okay. And so, uh, but I would do that. And I made up a slideshow that was had audio and sound and all, still have it. It's a little out of date because I don't use it much anymore. But it actually allowed me to talk over the slides and show the properties and show how I do it and why, why it's a good deal for me. And why it's a good deal for you, the in 
owner of the IRA or to give me to let me use your money. Right. Okay, what kind of returns? How how do you sell it to someone? Like well, sell me like, hey, I got a hundred thousand okay. dollars in the bank. Okay, you got it in the bank and it's earning one percent interest. So right. it's, it's earning terrible. You. Like I, below that, yeah, right now it's, it's earned, like point seven five. That went up from half a point. Okay, so, so it's, it's earning a you a minuscule, tiny amount of money. Sure, it's, it's being time. inflated. You're losing it by inflation up sure. to about three percent. So you're actually losing a couple of percent a year, even though it don't seem like it. Right. I'm going to pay you, if you loan your money to me, I'm going to pay you 6%. It's going to grow tax deferred. If you're in a 30 to mm. 35% tax bracket, like most people, state and federal, that means you're going to get an equivalent yield of about 9%. Now, it's going to be secured. And this is a very important word, secured. Secured means it's secured by a first mortgage on a single family home or a single piece of property, whatever the property might be. Collateral, collateralized. That's collateral. Now, the difference is you buy stocks or bonds, you get a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. That's all you get. You do not have a lien against their typewriters or building their parking lot or anything else. It's fake. Yeah, it's fake. Really. Me. Confidence. That's all it is, is confidence. Where here, if I defaulted, that property would become the property of that IRA and its owner of the IRA, who is the you in this case sure so what would happen is you could continue to direct the ira to rent the property and the money would go into the ira just like it i was making payments you could sell the property and your lump sum would come back plus any profit i had in the property would come back to your ira and it would all be tax deferred okay now so what's the terms how long like i, I normally got do a five-year term so you do a five-year lock balloon so that you yes, don't, can't get no, I, I okay. do a five-year balloon i normally amortize it on 15 years okay and that gives you the option then to exit or renew okay and if you renew you're going to renew at whatever the market rate of interest is that and that's going to be something you and i are going to negotiate so in the beginning do you negotiate that in the beginning uh, on the first five years. And so at the six, end of that five years, if you wanted to renew, it would be whatever I was paying in that time frame. All right. It sounds so easy to get money. And, and I know people that do get private money, and they say it's so easy. How, what's it like? Is there a ratio between how many people say no to, to say yes? Because, like, I, I have a – there's a lady that I met the other day. She – her husband went to a rich dad, poor dad you know, class. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. And they want to get in real estate. They have seventy five thousand dollars burning a hole in their pocket. But they 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 don't want to they don't want to be landlords. They but they do want to invest. They want to get involved. And okay. I felt when I got done with meeting with them that I could ask them, maybe you should do private you know private money. How well, how do I well that's what do a I suggestion say? to them. And what I would what I would show them is some of your properties. If I were you, I would get them in my car. Okay. I would take them around and I would show them some properties and I would show them the good and the bad. In other words, I'd say, this is one ready to rent. Okay. This is what one looks like when I buy it. That's right. That's what I do. That'll okay. impress them. And not only that, it will give you, you're leveling with them. You're not painting them any kind of blue sky. But the, the point more than anything is they need you as badly as you need them. They don't know they need you. That needs to be explained to them. And how do I explain that? Hey, you're getting 0.75%. The first thing I tell people is, what do you do you have an IRA? Do you have an 401k? Do you have a CD? Yes. Do you have a savings account? Yes. What are you earning on those things? Um 1%. Would you like to earn 6? Yes. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes, yeah, I'm only getting like $60 a year. Would you be willing to meet me one day next week and, and let me show you how you can do that. Sure. Are you going to try to sell me something? No, I'm going to show you what I do. If you like it, fine. If you don't, no problem. Okay. I will meet you at Starbucks. We'll have a cup of coffee. We'll get in the car, and I'll show you what I do. Okay. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, I appreciate you meeting me, and I'll buy the coffee. All right. So no that's kind of no your bad. introduction. So you get them going. And then you, what's your, what's a what's a quantified rate there? Like how if many people go have- out with me and look, and they have a serious interest I'll close 70, 80% of those. Okay, so how do you now, close them? Like, what do you do? Well, like, what's I, the process? They, well, they look at those properties. They'll become interested. And then I will simply say, this is what I have available. Okay. If you'd like to get on a waiting list, uh, we can do that. Uh, most of the time right now, I'm blessed with a waiting list. Sure. Now, there have been times when I wasn't, when I needed money right away. But most of the time right now, if you call me, I'd probably be three to four months out. 
So people call you now. Your, yeah. People call you now and say, "Hey, I have a hundred thousand dollars burnt. You know, I'm not getting a return. Yeah. I know real estate's I had working." Some people call one day and they said, "You know, we sold our lake house or whatever. We don't go down there much anymore. It was one hundred fifty thousand dollars. We'd like to get on the list." Cool. They had been on the list on other properties and had some other properties. They just came in. I had another one call me one time and said, we've inherited some money. Okay. You know, I don't know the circumstances. It wasn't any of my business, but they had an extra 50, you know, like that. Okay. So then, okay, hey, I want, I'm a, I got the $50,000 in the bank and I want to invest with you, Pat. What? What's the next step? What do I do? Well, I'll help you. I mean, that's the way you have to do this. You're going to learn to Serve do this. I, I get the certain documents, which I download off the internet from equity trust which is the custodian i use today okay cool and i help you fill those out they're very simple and we s- email them back to equity trust to explain equity trust and what their role well, is in equity this? trust is the custodian think of the custodian it can be a bank it can be a, a stock brokerage house it can be a savings loan it can be sure. in some financial institution someone is the, the custodian. middle person now they are appointed by the irs to be a custodian they fulfill all of the irs reporting requirements and all that okay now there's two ways that custodians work one way is they invest your money mm-hmm. pay you whatever they agreed to pay you and keep the difference i.e banks fidelity Hedge those funds. kinds of people fidelity will sell you stock for your ira they'll make a commission on the stock and they make a fee on doing the ira Okay. Now, Equity Trust says, we'll discharge you a flat rate for, for how much money you put here on a yearly basis, which about $100,000 is about 500 bucks, And that's all we charge. We don't care if you put money here and buy the Hope Diamond. We don't care if you buy cars. We don't care what you do with it. As long as it's a legal IRA transaction that the IRS will approve, we'll fund it if you instruct us to. It's your money. Now, you have the way you keep it from being a taxable event to you, the investor, is it's an arm's length transaction. By arm's length, like you and I. We're friends, but we're not brother in laws or anything like that. So you're putting your money there. I'm borrowing your money. I'm paying a real interest rate back on it. It's not some deal where you're living in the house. You see okay. what I mean? It's sure. a real, true, arm's length real estate investment. Then there is no IRA or IRS problem. Sure. Now, one of the things that equity trust will do, if you don't do the documents right, they'll say, no, you got to do this or this and this because you're not going to be in compliance if you don't. Now, when I make my mortgage company check when I, every month, when I pay your back, pay me back, I, it says equity trust, FBO, which stands for for the benefit of Stephen Van Kallenberg, IRA, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. Okay. And that check goes off to them and they put it in your account. So I'm an investor. And I'm trying to explain to my aunt that she needs to loan me money through my through her IRA because she's getting a terrible return. Do they feel? Do they like the word equity trust because they've never heard of the custodial before? I mean, uh, how, most it, people does it help don't. You? Does it help you? Because how I would sell it would be, hey, this is a transaction that's a third party that it's not. You're that's not just are, you're yeah. not wiring me money. It I, goes in there, and then it, then they're, they're they file a lien at the closing company. When we close the transaction, when we finally, when I pick the property and, you know, I can send you the, 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 the numbers, the terms and all that jazz, then they, then they file a lien in your name, in your IRA on top of the property. Is that right? And that's how that's, they kind of tell right. them I down. never touch the money. I've had people want to give me the money. I don't want their money. Yeah. Don't write me a check. Yeah, absolutely not. So you not. say write it to. It needs to go to First American Title. Okay. The whole, okay. The, and, and Equity Trust, and I will instruct Equity Trust. Uh, that you're going to do. I'll give you the forms that, that you have to sign. I'll help you do that. And you send okay. those to Equity Trust. Then I'll instruct the title company that they'll get a wire transfer from Equity Trust. Equity Trust will look at the note, the mortgage that I prepare, and they'll be acceptable with it. Then I will bring that to closing, and the title company will execute those. I'll sign them. They'll notarize them. They'll file the mortgage at the courthouse and send it to Equity Trust. Okay. All right, folks. Listen, we we're already out. It's of t- way way harder to yeah, do than we, thirty minutes. We got about no, no. We got we got we got about four or five more minutes. But we're gonna have back. We're gonna have Pat back on every week until his day of class. Um, he is teaching a class. It is in Oklahoma City on May twenty fifth at the Savvy offices. If you want to know more information, you can go to okcclass dot com or classokc dot com, and you go right to his class. It's a hundred bucks. 
It's going to be for two hours. It's going to be intensive. When you leave there that night, you will know and you will be able and armed to go borrow money well, from private IRAs. We, we hope so. We, a, some people will be better at it than others in, in a couple of hour period of time. But we'll we'll get you started with what it takes. Okay. Well, the concepts. Yes. All right. So we got a few more minutes. What? Tell us more about um, like the good, the bad, or what, what's what's a thing that may go wrong. No, let's not talk about that. Let's okay, that let, me, the, let me tell you about some benefits to you. Okay, as as the, an the person owning you're the, the investor. Okay, the first benefit to you is you're going to pay on investment property. You're going to pay six seven percent. You ain't going to get that for three percent. Sure. The bank won't give it to you. They may give it to you on your house for three and a half percent or something, but they won't give it to you on anything else. Now, you sign this with no personal liability. Me as it like yeah because I borrow your money. Okay, it's a base. I write the, the mortgage. The mortgage says right in it that and the note does, and the mortgage that the property that's described in this mortgage stands for one hundred percent of the debt obligation. Which means I am not personally liable. Now, I've never defaulted on one in my life, never intend to. Sure. But if I had to, it wouldn't bankrupt me. And then is there a percentage that, what's the safety net for the, the IRA lender to you, the person well, that's lending? He'll have a property. Let's say the property's worth 50. Okay. I'll have a mortgage of 40 or 38. Well, the property's still worth 50. Well, if I defaulted, he could still sell it for 50. Right. And he'll make Maybe some even money. more. Or he can just sell it to me and I'll buy it. But my point being, he could sell the property, recover his money, pay his realtor, and still have all his money back and a little more to go with it. Sure. Now, if uh, if he wanted to. Now, the next thing he could do, he could just keep renting it. Oh, that's right. He owns the asset. Yeah. they just The rent checks go to his IRA so every month. So if you slip and fall and die and you didn't have a will and you lost this house, it's 100% goes to... Uh, the whoever. mortgage, yeah. and that mortgage is backed by the IRA and then equity yeah, trust, this goes whatever in the IRA. would say. And yes. then all of a sudden, you qu- so me, if I ever became super cash-heavy wealthy, I could loan money out, and I'm almost, I got an army of people out there working for me. I'm loaning them money. They're finding deals. They're financing them at a percentage. What percentage rate do you try, like 60, 70, 80%? I never exceed about 70% of value. Just super safe. So 30% of So if the market margin. went down, you'd still have a good loan, unless it went drastically down. I mean, it could go down a lot and still not okay. Not make your property okay. worth less than it's Another on qu- it. quick question. How, how do you service a loan? Do you write them a ch- you write it to I Equity Trust? I write a check and send it to Equity Trust. And Equity then they Trust put it takes in- care of everything else. Okay. Do you send the customer or the private money guy? Do you send or Greg Gal? Do you send them a statement? No, they can go out on the internet and see their statement every time. So boom, they see. Oop, I loan. I get three hundred and ten dollars. I'm making. It'll show right there on. Uh, it's about two days after Equity Trust receives the money, it'll show in their account, and they just go right on their website and see it. And they could probably get a hard one, or they could call me. I'd be glad to make sure that they sure. got paid. You know, but. Okay. I don't have any problem with that. All right, we got about two more minutes. Let's get another quick one in there. How about if I'm, you know, I'm I'm the private money guy. I'm loaning you money, Pat, and I need that thirty thousand dollars. Well, have you ever had that question? I've had it happen, and depending on why you need it, I often will make some arrangement to to bail you out because you have a, li- a long li- list of a long list of people. Now, at the same time, I have to have some security for myself. That's the reason I have a five year term. Sure. I mean, I can't. I have to be able to sleep nice. I can't have you call me up and want your money back in a week. Yeah, and that, you've already done all this work, and now you're. I've got millions of dollars out there, and everybody wants their money back. That wouldn't work. But like at the same scheme. time, I've had people that had some catastrophic medical or something and needed their money. Generally, I have enough people within a couple months or so I can move. Them. So basically, it would around. be like refinance with another private lender. Exactly, and that that one and would still be would an equity and trust, and we still use a title company and the whole bit. Now they would have some extra cost because you're going to have to pay the title company some to fees to, to to draw the paperwork and and sure. handle the filing. So if you had a fifty thousand dollar loan with me, the fees might come to two fifty three hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, that is not my responsibility, nor the new investor's responsibility. All right. Another question. So I'm an investor. I got private money lined up. What what fees does it charge me as an investor to borrow private money? Nothing. Exactly. That's it. I can have it waiting. And the difference is I'm not standing around on the sidelines like you are. Like, let's take you and me right now. We go out and look at a house in the next 30 minutes. Okay. I'm going to tell them I'll give you this. Okay. Because I got it. Right, right now. Right now. I got cash. I got it right now. 
And me, you're to, wondering if the bank can be persuaded to do this. Well, I wonder if well, the appraisal will come in. You want to call the bank. You want to call the appraiser. You want to see what's going to happen. It'll take you 10 days to know if you can do this or not. Well, I know I'm already. Ready to, I'm ready to sign the contract today and, and close it. it as soon as the title work is clear. Because right. I have the money. So private money, another advantage is, is that speed. And I'll tell you what else. It's not only speed. When you talk to the customer, you sound different when you know you have the money. Yeah, you're just confident. And they sense it. They may not know it, but they sense it. Excellent. Man, I, I don't want to cut this short, but woo, next week we'll have uh, Pat come back and and just ramp us up again. You do not want to miss June 25th, Oklahoma City, private money, self-directed IRA class. Pat's going to tear the roof up. And uh, we're going to learn so much. Pat, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. I look forward to next uh, week. You'll you'll be on. All right. Take care. Buy assets.